thank you so much, Mary Pat, for having me. Um, I'm really stoked. I, I like to tell people now, you know, I was a full-time traveling musician and now I'm a full-time stay-at-home musician. <laughs> and it's been quite an adjustment over the past year. Um, but I feel so fortunate to be able to have this medium, this platform, to be able to like still play tunes with people and still kind of connect with the different communities. Um, and there's this thing, this magic thing on Zoom called the mute button. So like what's so great about being able to learn tunes like this, I think that we feel more comfortable. You know, we're at home. We don't worry about what other people are thinking about us. And that's something that I feel really sensitive about when I'm at a jam session. You know, if I don't know the tune or I'm just kind of like, you know, you, you kind of get in your head. And I really love being able to do this, where, again, you are free to make as many mistakes as you want. You are free to not listen to me. <laughs> you can really do whatever you want. And it just feels like very liberating. So I think this is something that I will miss when we like go back to like teaching tunes in person, where uh, <laughs> there is no mute button in real life. <laughs> I like I've been like joking that I'll I want I'm gonna like have a piece of paper that says like with a picture of the mute button you know <laughs> just so that uh, <laughs> if I need to get someone's attention I'll just like mute <laughs> that will not work but um but yeah I'm super stoked to be here um a little bit of background about me I'm Charlie Canoe's daughter um <laughs> And very fortunate to like grow up with being exposed to as much music and different kinds of music as possible. Um, and kind of found myself, I kind of fell into the contra dance community. And I was telling Mary Pat a little bit earlier is what I love about contra dance music is that it's this huge bubble of tunes. And so there are modern tunes, you can play straight up old time tunes, Irish tunes. And I have this really hard problem of picking favorite genres of tunes. And so um, I just, Contra Dance is just so great that you can just play like whatever you want. 32 bars and like has a nice beat to it. You're good. You're sold. So, and those happen to be like my favorite kind of tunes. Um, and so what I thought I would teach today, um, tune wise is if you guys saw that video, um, back at the beginning of the pandemic, I taught a tune called Weed Walker, um, which was a Van Nordstrom tune. And I thought I would teach the um, the companion tune to it. Um, and this tune is called Wind Chills Falls, which was written by Noah um, and Noah Van Nordstrom. And Wind Chills Falls, um, I believe, is a waterfall near the Ashokan Reservoir. So like Janet mentioned it a little bit earlier at Ashokan camp, um, they had a virtual camp since the camp that I've been going to for the past few years um, teaching and Andrew and Noah Van Norsen grew up going to. And so it's this really lovely camp where it's this kind of like epicenter for learning new tunes and kind of getting your fingers um, or just it's just a wonderful, beautiful camp. Uh, and it's like an hour and a half north of New York City and it's run by Jay, um, Jay Unger and Molly Mason and they've been running it forever. They have a Northern Week, Southern Week, um, Family Week, there's a bunch of camps and so I've been going to the Northern Week, and they have every genre of music possible. Contra dance, English, French, Quebecois, Scandinavian. They kind of like cram everything that doesn't fit anywhere else into Northern Week. Um, <laughs> so this tune um, was written uh, kind of in honor of it, and I've been playing it a long time. And it's just a fun modern tune, but definitely has the old time flair to it. So it's got some like hip cool rhythms to it, a few syncopated measures that kind of spice it up. But I definitely think about it in the old time uh, genre or kind of as far as like, I don't know, ornamentation goes or bowing goes. So what I think will be the best way of teaching this is I'll play it a couple of times through up to tempo. Um, so don't panic. Um, <laughs> don't panic when you hear me play it, but I want you to be able to hear it just so you kind of know what the ultimate goal is for this tune. And so you have some kind of context for what I'm getting at. So I will teach the tune, I'll play the tune a couple times fast. I will play it slowly full time through um, and kind of singing it or trying to visualize the kind of the arc of the tune um, is always a nice idea with that. And then we'll break it down and teach it and I'll teach it phrase by phrase. So no panicking allowed just yet. 
Um, if you have any questions about uh, something or if you want me to repeat something, feel free to put it in the chat or unmute yourself and ask. And I am totally happy to accommodate. So again, this is Windchills Falls and I'll go ahead and play it up to tempo. In the key of A, and this is a happy tune. tune and please sing along um, or try and if you feel free to finger along or whatnot um, but this is just kind of the opportunity again to kind of visualize and kind of hear some repeating patterns that you might hear in the tune um, and just kind of get a better idea of the whole thing before breaking it down so like when we break it down into sections it like makes a little bit more sense in context all right here we go going to change my view real quickly. I'm spotlighted and I don't want to stare at myself that big. <laughs> so I'm going to make it in gallery view, but feel free to keep it at spotlight. I'm just changing the way that I, that I'm looking at it. I already know what I look like. <laughs> All right. Here's the first phrase that I'll be teaching. Actually, I lied. Let's just do this. And it's more or less an A major scale going up. And then we're going to go back down to a C sharp. And we'll just start with that first phrase. And if you're following along with the bow, 
bowing. I'm doing it all separate except for the last three notes. I'm doing a three note slur like that. Throughout the tune, I'm gonna do my very best to kind of keep consistent bowing if that's something that's interesting to you. And if not, don't worry about it. Um, but I'll do my best to kind of keep that consistent. Let's do that a couple more times. Yeah. Two. Uh. Now the next phrase is going to be this kind of cool rhythm where we have a note that kind of slurs over uh, on a strong beat. And this is kind of important because we have some more phrases that are going to follow this that have that same rhythmic pattern. So let me play you that next phrase. So you might hear my foot stamping. And that open A that I'm playing goes across that strong beat. Just loop that. strong beat with my bow I'm doing an up bow and when I hit that strong beat I kind of speed up my bow just ever so slightly to kind of give it that extra lift dum ba dee da dum um where it's like I'm not changing my my bow stroke I'm still going on this up bow but again I'm just giving a little bit of a oomph um speed wise when I'm going to get to that next note and I'm not changing the pressure slightly bit faster on the bow speed not the actual note right but again it's just that bow speed that gives it a little bit of je ne sais quoi so let's take those two measures that we just learned da 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 and we'll loop that a couple of times one and two um everybody. The next couple of phrases are going to have that same rhythmic um, pattern that we were talking about with just a couple of different notes. Let me play you that next phrase. So instead of on an F sharp, we're going to start now on an E, which is the note right below F sharp. So like we're just basically taking every time that we've had an F sharp, we're replacing it with an E instead. we've learned so far. And this next phrase is going to be the exact same one as previously played. So we have like basically an F sharp sandwich sandwich. And we have that phrase and we're going to put it at the end as well so it's repeated. So we kind of just learned the first half of the A. And so let's play that all together, starting at the top. And we'll do it a bunch so you can kind of get familiar with that. One, and two, and. E, now F sharp.
up, you guys. Ho, 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 ho. Let me play for you the next phrase. And then we have this again. I love it when we have like the same phrase that repeats itself over and over again. And like the tune sounds harder until you break it down. And you're like, oh, it happened so many times. So it's so nice when you realize that. So let me play for you. This is the second half of the A. So we're going to start on an E on the D string and then go up to the C sharp on the A. And I do all separate except for the last three notes that I slur that up. bit. So before we go back to the beginning to review, let's just learn that ending because it's going to feel so satisfying when we put it all together. And so the last phrase, the ending, a pretty standard fiddle tune ending, nothing too, um, too fancy there. Starting on E on the D string. separate, three note slurred, two note separate. And I know there's like an official name for that kind of that bowing pattern that of course I can't remember. Um, but having those three up bow slurs is a kind of a common thing in fiddle, um, fiddle, fiddle tunes. That you're kind of slurring through the downbeat. And for me, that's kind of a big fiddly thing to do when playing for dances is that you're not always playing a down bow on a downbeat. And so doing this three note separate, three note slurred, two note separate bow pattern kind of breaks up that pattern. It's a really fun thing to practice. Um, and I made sure to kind of add that in this tune. So we just learned the ending. I'm going to show you a little bit of a fancy thing at the end. If you want to add it, you don't have to. Um, I always, for some reason, find myself doing a four finger A and an A open A at the same time. Because you, you already have that G sharp already hanging out there. And I can just kind of do a hammer on. And because my third finger is already there, I have like a higher likelihood of playing my fourth finger in tune. <laughs> Struggle's real. I already have that third finger as an anchor. And so I can do both of those A's at the same time. Now, the other thing is the rhythmic thing that we can do on that A. We can just end it and have a solid whole A there. Or you can do the where you kind of do this old time bowing. Of course, there's a name for it and I don't know it that I'm 
kind of retaking that A, but before that strong beat. Ya ba da ba dee 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 ba ba Right? You've got that syncopated. And so I think you might write it out as like a dotted quarter note tied to another dotted quarter note. Da ba da ba dee 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 ba one, two, three, one, two, three. Da ba da ba dee ba doo ba do bo. Do ba da ba dee ba doo ba do go. So again, you're anticipating that A on a strong beat. if you want is I do a little scoop if you're doing the fourth finger A in the open A and again I'm emphasizing that syncopation by scooping down just on that fourth finger A da is kind of how I do it and that is kind of like this thing this anticipated note bow change you'll find in old time music everywhere. Like once you learn it and kind of understand it, you're gonna hear it everywhere. And so if this is the first time you're hearing this, um, don't worry. This is something that will like take time to learn. Um, and once you work on it and kind of figure it out, it's gonna like, it, it changed my playing, I have to say, of realizing if you have a long note, instead of just holding it out like that, kind of doing that anticipation will make the tune syncopated without, you know, having to do, like, without having to really change the melody, I guess is what I'm saying. That was a lot. That was a kind of a tangent. I didn't mean to go quite down that rabbit hole. Sorry about that. Um, and if you're like, eh, that's not for me, again, just play that open A. <laughs> and you are all good. So of course, with me talking so much about those last two measures, we remember how the tune starts, right? Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Right? <laughs> Anybody? Uh. Ah. So one way to remember how this tune starts is it's an A major scale going up. Right? So let's go ahead and play the whole A part because we remember it. It's going to be great. We'll do it a bunch of times. One last thing, there are the pickup notes for the A1 going into the A2. It's just two notes, two eighth notes, E, F sharp. Like that. But we'll loop it a bunch um, at a slow tempo, and so I think you'll be able to catch on to those two extra notes. Ya -di -da -di -da -ba -di -da like that. One and two and
congratulations. You guys just learned half of the tune. I'm gonna do a quick arm stretch just to remind myself that my body moves in other directions. Whew. Yeah. <sighs> so, everyone has that perfect, obviously, so we will move on. <laughs> um, the A2 ending going into the B is just ever so slightly different. Um, the A1 ending, we kind of, we did the cool hip like that. Um, in the A2, there's actually not time to do that. And we're just going to do a solid A and then we're going to have a four note pickup instead. And that's the, those four pickup notes. So let me, if I put it in context, we have, um, the ending. See how it's kind of, it's kind of going up. And so we have just those four notes. So let's go back a little bit on the A, starting on that low E on the D string. Like that. So we'll just get that in our fingers a couple of times before officially moving on. Da ba da ba di de do di dum. Da ba di dum. Like that. One and two and. myself doing the hammer on G sharp to A like that so you can definitely do that as well like that nice all right here is the B part one really fun thing that I like about this tune um, is the B part doesn't like we're in the key of A but the B part doesn't start on the A chord and to me that's kind of the juicy just, part about the tune uh, that's all right, yeah. is that a question I don't think so. <laughs> um, and so um, it lands on a big fat E major chord. And the E major chord is the five, right? It's the five of A. My piano's out of tune. I won't play it. Um, but we're going to land on a... And I think that's what makes this tune so happy, is that you've got this top of the B part. It's just like, we're here. Ah! Um, and so before I go into the B part, let me just like play it for you to remind you how it goes um, and then we'll break it down. So we just did that ending. to be like oh yes haha <laughs> so we already know the ending for the B part and then I think you also heard the spicy bit that to me is I think like the the trickiest part of the tune but also the most fun of the tune but let's do the phrase right before that which is the beginning of the B slide into C sharp. You don't have to do it every time. Actually, I suggest you don't do it every time. But it kind of gives a nice little um, ornamentation there, just doing a quick slide to that C sharp. Let's do that two more times. One and two and. One more. Nice job, everyone. Now here's the cool hip modern contra dance measure of the tune. Now before trying play, trying to play it, let's get that rhythm down. 
And let's go ahead and sing it. Da da ba ba di be do ba di do. Ba da ba ba di be da ba di da. Ba da ba ba di be da ba di da. If you're tapping your foot, you can kind of feel where those notes are not landing on those down beats. Da da ba di di da da di do. Di da ba ba di be do ba di do. One more time. I love that. <laughs> so let's add those notes to that rhythm. We're going to start on an F sharp, go to a high A, and then we've got a B forefinger kind of sneaking in as well. about it. Again, that's kind of the trickiest bit of the tune. And I'm happy to break it down a little bit slower if folks want. No one looks like they're panicking, so I think we're okay. Yeah. <laughs> no one's quant crying, so, you know. And the birds aren't complaining, right, Linda? <laughs> Excellent. All right. Let's back it up a little bit to the top of the B part. Da ba dum ba ba do da. Da dum ba ba di ba do ba di dum. We'll start right on that downbeat again. This is that big strong five chord, and we have a B note to start. One and two and. stretch you guys of the tune. This is so great. Um, the next phrase, it's all kind of like very repeated patterns. You're going to kind of hear a rhythmic pattern happening with slightly different notes, but not too many different notes actually. Um, here's the second half of the B. So we actually have that exact same phrase as the beginning of the B. And then we have, let's try that together. C sharp. One more. Nice job. And guess what? The ending, we already know. <laughs> I love when that happens.
right? We've got those four pickup notes that lead us right back to the top of the B part. And then if we were to end, or we're gonna end the B2 and go back to the top, we have that A1 ending. So it kind of comes full circle to that. Before we go back to the top of the B, let's practice those last four measures of the tune. Da ba di da di dum da di dum da di da da la ba di dum da di dum ba ba di dum, and we'll stop right there, and we'll do that a couple of times. Again, this is kind of the last half of the B. One and two and. one more time but we're gonna keep going back to the B2 and so we're gonna play the whole B after that okay here we go and tune in in half an hour. That is so cool. Woohoo! Like, thank goodness for Zoom. <laughs> Alright, we're all going to take a deep breath and we're going to just give it enough time where we forget how the tune goes and then we're going to play the tune again. Um, if you're interested in like a couple of other like tiddly bits that I do, a cool thing about tunes in A and tunes that are also in D and G is we've got, you know, these perfect fifth strings and they're just like begging to be played as well. So rarely do I play this tune just playing the single notes. Like I find myself droning a fair amount with this tune. And so, for example, in the B part, because the top of the tune is an E major chord, you've got that E note, that open E note, that you can play at the same time. Right? And I can do that four finger slide at that, that E as well. So you could almost drone on your open E string the entire A part except for a couple of notes and you can drone on that A. Right there. Janice just asked me to write out the name of the tune, and that's an excellent idea. I think I'll let everyone know. This is called Winchell's Falls, and it's spelled like that. And those are some falls in upstate New York. And by upstate, I mean anything north of New York City, not actually upstate New York. <laughs> um, so yeah, on that um, on the B part, I kind of drone a lot on the open E string, and then on the A part. <laughs> Kind of doing a mixture of both open open A and an open E. <laughs> Janice, sorry, Janice. Janice says she was writing wind chill falls as opposed to wind chills falls, which I think all of you relate a little bit more than wind chills falls. <laughs> that reminds me. 
Um, I, I was really fortunate a couple years ago to teach at a fiddle camp in Anchorage, Alaska. Uh, and I taught at a kid's fiddle camp. Um, and like one of the first tunes that all the kids learned was whiskey before breakfast. But like teaching to, you know, kids, you know, to drink whiskey before breakfast might not be something you want to teach children at the age of seven, that it's an appropriate thing to do. So the Alaskans call the tune we ski before breakfast. <laughs> and I just love that. And every time I like, play that tune, I just can't think of, like little kids going skiing before breakfast, which I would never do. <laughs> Too early in the morning for me. No, thank you. <laughs> oh, man. Um, one last little tiddly bit that I like to add. Um, you might have heard me play it um, on the B part. <laughs> I might do a little flicky poo, which is the official term. Because why not? I don't know. So the way that, you know, the uh, skeleton of the tune, you can do the flicky poo, you can do the slide, and then you can also do the drone for finger E. That's like four extra things you can add to just those two measures alone. So again, the skeleton. And then I can spice it up. It makes such a big difference. It's kind of cool. And or you can just pick one of those things to do. You don't have to do all of the, the all of those nuances. Um, so yeah, that's the whole tune. Let's go ahead and play it a bunch of times. Um, Mary Pat was kind enough to add the tune in the chat if you want to go ahead and download it and look at it. Yep. Excuse me. I um, can actually um, screen share it if that's oh, all right okay. with you, Audrey, yeah, so people can do. look at the notes and the chords yeah. while they listen to you play. That would be what's yeah, putting that fantastic. up. So. Yeah, and oh, for I know there's a couple of folks who aren't playing the fiddle. Um, uh, Lynn, Dad, I guess Rob has his fiddle out now, but the chords are also kind of written. And if you wanted to take a look at the chords, um, and I've also got the bowing written out there as well. So again, if you kind of take a look at the dots that Mary Pat's sharing, I do a lot of three note bow slurring. Um, to me, it's just kind of, I don't know, very like the heart of my fiddle playing and a lot of uh, fiddle players and the way they play tunes. Um, so on that note, let's go ahead and play the tune. I'll start at a nice slow tempo and I think I will, uh, whether I like it or not, I'll kind of speed it up a little bit. <laughs> we'll kind of start at that tempo. One and two and...
tunes. Like, it was such a cool experience. Like... It was like really incredible and also a little like depressing that we don't have state run programs where the youth can learn traditional music um, for free yeah. and kind of be a part of this opportunity. So um, that was quite an experience. Yeah. And <laughs> we played this tune with them. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So we have a little more time and you had mentioned, Audrey, that this tune you pair with Weed Walker, which oh, we yeah. do have in our online tune learning. So you don't have to teach us to that one to us. And if those have it, people who haven't learned Weed Walker, um, when this is done, we will, you know, that is on our YouTube channel. So you can look it up on our online tune learning sessions. But um, so when you pair this, do you play Weed Walker first? Do you play Weed Walker second? That's a really good question, Mary Pat. Um, generally, I play Weed Walker first um, for a couple of reasons. One, it's in the key of D, which has like less sharps than the key of A. So like mm -hmm. when you're thinking about putting tunes together, this is not always the case, but like my the first association is like the tune that's like a little bit lower sonically um, will be the tune that goes first. Because when you go to a D chord to an A chord, it has this kind of like uplifting feel versus A to D. And another reason why um, is if you go from A to D, it kind of sounds like you're resolving, right? Because A is the five of D. Um, and so if you go from the key of A to D, it might just kind of feel a little bit more settled. And we don't quite want that feeling. Um, and so we'll kind of go, that's kind of like how my mind, how I operate, if I'm kind of thinking about pairing tunes, is in general, I'll take the tune that, um, that has less keys or less sharps or flats in the first one. This is not a hard and fast rule, by the way, but it's kind of like my foundation. And then I'm like, okay, well, do, does the melody, um, and then the next thing to think about is the melody, right? And like, which one is like notier, right? And Weed Walker, um, I kind of, it was actually written on the banjo um, and there are less notes in the tune. Um, and then think about it more as an old timey march kind of thing. Da da ba da ba dee dee da da dum da da dee dee dum. So it has this kind of like nice jaunty feel to it. And then we, Winchell's Falls has a lot more notes in it, right? And so going from less notes to more notes versus more notes to less notes in my mind just makes a little bit more sense, like higher energy, right? And that's kind of the thing that I'm thinking about is like when you're pairing tunes, you want the second tune to perhaps be higher energy than the first one. Again, not always the case, but that's my immediate go-to is that you want to increase the energy as the tune progresses. Oh. Um, there's this kind of cheesy thing called like the, we call it the emotional curve or the emotional graph, passion graph um, of when you're p putting tunes together and kind of thinking about an arrangement playing for contra dances, you kind of sometimes we have kind of an idea of the story that we want to tell, right? So like we're going to start, you know, kind of, you know, nice and happy, but we're going to kind of get intense and we might get less intense somewhere. But again, we want to maybe end higher than we started out with. Not always the case, but when we start playing, we kind of have a basic idea of what that graph is going to look like musically before we start playing it cool yeah. and the tempos um because i know a lot of times you know we're we're playing just with fiddlers more than we're playing with dancers yeah. so we do have this tendency to start going rocket fast more of a performance Ooh. tempo and i'm sure that if we actually showed up at the tapestry at a contra dance to try to play this we might get slapped <laughs> like stop it stop it you know so <laughs> Excuse me. No, thank you. <laughs> yeah, the dancers will revolt. So yeah. So so do you have even if it's like a metronome marking or just kind of a what's a what's a good kind of a tempo where the yeah. dancers will be happy? Of course, yeah. In in the before times, um, you know, one twelve to one twenty was kind of the acceptable range of contra dances. Anything faster than one twenty, the dancers kind of feel a little bit unsettled because they can't quite get the moves down on time. Um, and it varies by region, but if you're like under 120 and not slower than 112, you're going to be okay. Square dance is a little bit different though. And so if you're used to playing for square dances and not contra dances, square dances go a lot faster than that or can go a lot faster. So the square dance, re you know, will live between 120 and like 135, right? Playing for a whole evening of square dancing is exhausting. Um, what's interesting um, that I found is that 
I'm kind of participating in a lot of virtual contra dances, whole other topic. But turns out when you're dancing by yourself for virtual contra dances, people like to dance a little bit slower. So it's really funny. I'm now like playing no, no faster than 112 for online events. And I've been kind of joking that like when I go back to like playing for real dances that I'm gonna have a hard time getting back up to tempo to 120. Um, <laughs> Cause that's not slow. That is a not a slow tempo. Um, but that's definitely the range, um, the range of speeds for contra dances. And I have, I don't know if folks have known, there's a, it's called the Metro Timer or something. Um, there's a, uh, there's an app that kind of self detects um, your speed while you're playing. Um, uh, of course, I can't remember the name of it, and I have a million apps on here. Um, but you uh, kind of what we'll do sometimes at the beginning of a dance, especially if it's folks that I haven't played with a lot, I kind of put this thing b by my side. Don't look at it very often, but again, it'll kind of sense your speed and I'll just like double check it once in a while to make sure that we're in that realm. You don't want to be like attached to it because then you're going to get obsessed about tempos. And if you're thinking about tempos all the time where you're playing for contra dances, it becomes less fun. So the other, like the biggest rule, like I'm giving you these tempo markings, but the biggest thing is to watch the dancers. Like if they're like, if they're like panting at the end of the line and like falling over, or if they're like ending all of their moves early and just kind of standing there waiting for the next move to happen, um, like kind of gauge your audience that way which is a little bit more nuanced.